This is Anthony Durenzo, Associate Professor of Writing at Ithaca College. I want to talk to you about Trinacria, a tale of Bourbon Sicily. Guernica Editions wants to publish this historical novel. To make that possible, the Casa Belvedere Italian Cultural Foundation is sponsoring this campaign. But what exactly is my book about? Essentially, Trinacria is a ghost story. History is full of ghosts, particularly in Sicily, where the truth so often is buried alive. Sicilian, in fact, is the only Western language without a future tense. No surprise, after 25 centuries of colonialism. The novel takes place from 1794 to 1882, mostly in Palermo, but also in Naples and London. This period saw the destruction of the Kingdom of the Two Sicilies, the unification of Italy, and the betrayal of democracy. At the center of these events is this woman, Zita Valanguera Spinelli, Marchesa of Scalea, notorious beauty, ferocious wit, and reluctant businesswoman. Laned on her honeymoon, she walks with a cane and uses the pen name Trinacria after the three-legged symbol of Sicily. Zita embodies Sicily's violated pride, and her turbulent life mirrors the island's transition from feudalism to capitalism. But why should that matter now? Two reasons, actually. First, Sicily's collapse in the late 19th century caused mass emigration. Ten million people around the world trace their origins back to this calamity. Second, Italy's fiasco in Sicily suggests the limitations of nation-building. Good intentions never exempt us from the pottery barn rule. You break it, you own it. And now for our story. The novel begins in 1960. During the centennial of Garibaldi's invasion of Sicily, a Hollywood crew descends on Palermo to shoot an epic about the Italian Revolution. Researching the past, the director visits the Capuchin Monastery, whose catacombs contain over 8,000 mummies. Preserved among these is Marchesa Spinelli, Dead for 80 years, but still haunted by memories, she narrates the novel from beyond the grave. Posthumously, Donna Zita recalls her failed relationships with friends and family. This is her father, Don Alfonso, Baron of Campo Fiorito, a cold, arrogant man. An amateur scientist and professional misanthrope, he blights his daughter's life with cynical maxims. Figa mia! Love is a gigantic twitch. Galvani proved that to my satisfaction. Women's legs just happen to be shapelier than frogs. <laughs> this dashing young man is Zita's lover, Benjamin Ingham, who comes to Sicily in 1806 and corners his fledgling Marsala industry. He made me brass climbing on other men's box, but I improved their methods. Although he buys himself a title, Ingham launches an industrial revolution that inevitably leads to a political one. That brings us to Zita's granddaughter, Regina Carolina. She is named after the Queen of Naples, but everyone calls her Quarantotto because she was born in 1848. This young rebel supports Garibaldi's liberation of Sicily, but she never realizes, much to her grandmother's annoyance, that she is destroying her way of life. When the revolution comes, Nona, cowards will become heroes and the dead will dance in the streets. Last but not least is the doomed romantic poet Giacomo Leopardi. Zita, his patron, visits his villa near the ruins of Pompeii. Disaster has turned him into a philosopher. Of all human constructions, Marchesa, the only one safe from the dissolving hands of time, a castle's in the air. Drawing on history and family legend, Trinacri presents a tale of irony and paradox, of progress and reaction, in which the splendors of Bourbon Caserta 
yield to the wonders of the Crystal Palace. By turns, intimate and sweeping, Trinaquia questions the price of pride and counts the cost of prosperity. An old story, I'm afraid. For centuries in the Mezzogiorno, illusions of grandeur and dreams of happiness have withered before a scorching truth that kills all hope and desire. As readers will learn, this is the fatal spell of Sicily, an island of loss and change where death alone is eternal. Thanks for contributing to this book campaign. I hope you enjoy my novel, but prepare to be haunted. The past never dies in Sicily, though God knows it tries. <laughs>